Hello everyone, this is Elena with All Things by Faith again. Uh, please excuse the black screen, it takes me forever to upload videos for whatever reason. If I actually shoot video, like it can take 24 hours, this video will probably take uh, 20 minutes, half hour at the most, to upload. Um, as always, I'm going to try to make this quick. I hope um, all of you out there are doing well. I wanted to thank all those um, who support me, um, support my channel, and um, come to my Zooms. And um, this last Zoom was amazing. I think it went three hours or three and a half hours or something. And um, we moved a lot of energy and we discussed a lot of different topics that... Um, that you can't really discuss in a church setting. Um, and uh, it was amazing. It was awesome. The spirit was truly with us. And I just want to thank all of my subscribers and all those who support me in what I'm doing to spread truth and light and to help heal people on the planet. Um, if you're not familiar with me, my name's Elena and I am a Christ centered energy healer and um, I'm a light worker. And meaning that I'm trying to spread truth and light on the planet. And um, yeah, so I'm also very gifted. I have a lot of different gifts. I hear clairaudiently. I get downloads of information. I have dreams. I have visions. Um, visions sometimes in dreams, sometimes um, waking. Um, and I offer healing sessions. And my information will be below um, if anybody is interested in contacting me, um, needing more information. So, um, I, <laughs> I got up this morning at about seven, actually it was about six 30. And, um, then I went back to bed at about seven. I just felt like I needed to lay back down, which is odd because normally once I'm up, I can't go back to sleep. That's just kind of how I'm made. But this morning, I was able to go back to sleep, and I actually went back to sleep for several hours. Um, my body's still recovering from a recent sickness, and um, the ascension process, for all of you that's wondering, also drains your energy. And some days, you feel really achy, and like you just, oh, this is awful, what's going on? And then other days, you're really energized and full of energy, and a lot of that, it just has to do with the energy on the planet different planetary alignments, and the whole ascension process of the earth. Mother Earth is very sick right now. She's very tired. And um, she is anxiously awaiting going from a celestial state to a terrestrial state, and then to a celestial state. She's anxiously awaiting um, the Savior's return. And so that has a lot to do with our energy during the ascension process. But what I want to talk about today is... Um, Basically, I had a dream this morning when I went back to sleep, and it was from Heavenly Father. It was from the Lord, and in the dream, he wanted me to touch on some things in the Book of Mormon, um, mostly Leaf, uh, Nephi, first Nephi, Nephi's dream. Um, actually, I believe it was Lehi's dream first, the great and spacious building dream. You all should be familiar with that if you're LDS. Um, and then Nephi, the Lord showed Nephi because he wanted to know, um, he put James one five into action and he, Nephi wanted to know if his, what his father saw in the dream and if the dream was true and correct. And the Lord poured that dream out on Nephi as well. Well, this morning the Lord poured that dream out on me and, um, yesterday I had seen something posted on Instagram and it was about the great and spacious building and it was basically talking about the LDS church and the great and spacious building that it actually is. And, um, I had pondered it for a moment and kind of let it go. But this morning when I went back to sleep, the angels poured this dream out upon me according to the Lord's will in my mind. Okay. So before I go 
into what I was shown and I took notes because I took notes right when I woke up because it was all very fresh in my mind. I've been up for a couple hours, but I had to take care of some things before I could sit down and do this video. First off, I want to talk about James 1.5 in the New Testament. This is something that the LDS Church um, kind of stands on. They use it to get people to um, pray about whether the church is true, like investigators and so forth, or even those who are growing up within the church. Um, and um, James 1.5 states, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and it braideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, Nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of sea driven with the wind and tossed. Okay, we're going to circle back to that for a second. That's my own little joke. I can't, I really don't like Jen Saki, but anyway. Um, so the next thing is something that I posted. I actually reposted it on Instagram and it says, don't blindly accept what the media says. Don't blindly accept what the experts say. Don't blindly accept what I say. Don't blindly accept anything. And I'm going to add, or anything anyone says, or anything any church leader or church organization says. Learn to step out of fear, analyze information, and trust yourself before anything else. Reconnect with your intuition. This is discernment, guys. Reconnect to Christ, your intuition, and your heart space. Your future depends on it, okay? So that being said, we'll go back to the whole James 1.5. So basically, here's something that the LDS Church has done. <laughs> so the Book of Mormon is true, okay? Oh, excuse me. My sinuses are just all of a sudden just pouring and running. It's just a small attack, even though I've cleaned my space. They don't want me putting this out there. The dark side, that is. Um, so um, what the church does is the church takes truth, ultimate truth. Was Joseph Smith a prophet? Yes, he was. Is the Book of Mormon true and did he translate it? Yes, he did. And they ask you to pray about those standing on James 1.5, okay? Okay. And when you pray about that, truly with nothing wavering in your heart, then you receive the truth of it. You receive the witness of the Holy Ghost because the Lord pours out his truth liberally, okay? And <clears throat> if you're truly asking, you truly want to know, and you're asking in faith with nothing wavering, you receive that answer, okay? But then what the church does is they put a little twist on it. You know, Satan adds his lies. They put a little twist in there and they say, well, now, if you received that witness, but you just can't get a witness on whether so-and-so is a prophet, whoever the current prophet is at that time, or, you know, you're having, uh, you know, you're just kind of having issue and you're not really getting an answer as to whether the church is true and all that, just, just go with that truth you did receive and the rest of it will come. Bing, 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 bing. Now, my BS detector goes off when I hear that, okay? When I was in my 20s and I was converting to the church, even though I did not have a witness of the rest of it, I still joined because I believed them. You know, it made sense. Satan's really good at twisting things and he knows how to twist things to make sense. Okay. So all of that being said, um, I would ask you, to please take everything I'm about to say and take it to the Lord. Stand on James 1.5. Put your pride aside and all that that you think you know, okay? And really ask if what I'm saying is true, okay? So my dream this morning, as I said, was about the great and spacious building that Nephi talks about in the Book of Mormon. First, Lehi, his father, talks about it. And then Nephi receives a witness because he truly wanted to know. And the Lord pours his spirit out upon him and shows him the same dream. Okay? So what I dreamed this morning was I dreamed I was on that path. That I was holding to the rod of iron. That I was passing by the great and spacious building. And 
in my dream, I knew, I had witness born to me, that the great and spacious building is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay? I saw temples. As I saw all kinds of things in this great and spacious building. Okay? All encompassed in that which is the whole of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay? Does that mean that I don't believe in the covenants that I made in the temple? No, I stand on those covenants. They're real and I made them between myself and God. But I renounced the part where I made and said that I would give my all to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints because that is also BS and that shouldn't be in there. It should not be in the endowment session. You should be um, offering all that you have physically, spiritually, uh, mentally, in your heart, in your soul to the Lord not to anything on this planet, including any church organization, okay? Um, what I saw was walking on that path. There were very few on the path, holding onto the rod, passing by that building. Some were coming out of the building and coming to grasp the rod, myself being one of them. And we continued as the path split. And we went into um, the mists, holding on to the rod, okay? And the mists represent all that which is unknown and trusting Christ. The rod represents Jesus Christ. It doesn't represent any church or any church organization or any prophet. It represents Jesus Christ, okay? And I was shown this very clearly in my dream this morning. Um... I was also shown flaxen cords being held, the ends of which were being held by Lucifer. Um, and that they were holding people. He was holding all those in the great and spacious building by these flaxen cords. You can interpret that however you wish. I've been told not to go into further interpretation on that by the other side. And to allow people to interpret that how they will. Okay? Okay. But Christ is the rod. He is the rod of iron that we cling to. He is the rod of iron that was in Lehi and Nephi's dream. That vision that they had of the rod leading to the tree of life, the rod is Jesus Christ, okay? And that vision pertained to this day. It pertained to the last days, okay? Now, my mother came to me in the dream this morning as well. And my mom passed away several years ago. We became closer, actually, after she passed away. We butted heads her whole life, the rest of her life on earth. And um, we disagreed on many things. She vehemently disagreed with my joining of the church. And I vehemently disagreed with her back because I had had that witness of the Book of Mormon and of Joseph Smith, okay? Okay. My mother, even though very lost and very damaged, and she damaged me as well, um, she trusted Christ. She believed in Christ. Now, I did her work in the temple. Now, after my gifts started coming alive, after I had done her work, I had a conversation with her in spirit where I said to her, Aren't you, you know, come on, you know, you know that the church is true. You know, you want to admit it. Just admit it to me. And my mother said, I don't want to talk about that right now. This morning I was shown and I was basically humbled and shown that my mother wasn't just being her snarky self and saying, I don't want to talk about that right now because we take our personalities with us, guys. We don't instantly become angelic and everything. We take... We take who we are with us when we cross through the veil, okay? But she wasn't actually being snarky like I had thought in the past, not wanting to admit that she was wrong about the church. She actually, what I was shown this morning, didn't have permission to discuss that with me because that would infringe upon my agency and that I needed to learn these things for myself. So this morning when she came to me, that was made very clear in my dream that I am on the correct path now. I am holding to the rod of iron, which is Jesus Christ. 
and I have come out of the great and spacious building. My mother is extremely happy for me. Okay. So all of that was shown to me. Now, getting to the whole Julie Rowe thing, because I know a lot of you are here because you don't like Julie Rowe. <laughs> and, and that's fine. We all have agency. Okay. I happen to like her and love her very much because she has helped me a lot. Okay. So the other thing I was shown in the dream was that um, there are many people online, many people who are in the great and spacious building who are mocking myself and mocking mainly Julie Rowe for coming out of the great and spacious building and for um, speaking truth. And that I was shown and I felt like heart pain in my dream of all the people, I was shown the horrible things that they're saying, not only about her, but about people who believe what she's saying is true, like myself and many others, many of my clients, okay? Um, that they were mocking, and then I was shown again Lehi's vision of the Great and Spacious Building and how people in the dream were mocking those on the path who were listening to truth and who were holding on to the rod and going off on their own, okay? And the majority were staying in the great and spacious building, okay? But I was shown that very clearly. And I was shown that I needed to do this video. And um, that I needed to express all these things in the video. And um, that we need to talk about not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So... Julie does speak truth, and I do believe Julie is who she says she is, okay? And um, Joseph Smith and Hiram, his brother, are the real deal. The Book of Mormon is the real deal, and Christ is the Savior, okay? So you don't, when you're leaving the great and spacious building, you don't want to toss out the baby with the bathwater. You don't want to toss out truth, okay? Okay? And those things are true. Um, now I'm going to uh, talk about, I'm looking at my notes here. They're a little convoluted. Um, so I just want to ask you, if you believe, if, you, if you're still going to the church and you're still active and you believe that it's okay to tell women that it's our responsibility to keep men from sin, that it's okay to shame us about our sensuality um, using guilt and shame and trying to control our bodies and our God-given creation energy because life, other human beings come through women's bodies, okay? Um, telling us what to wear to church, what not to wear, and that goes for men and women alike. And the guilt and shame energy and, and guilting and shaming the creation energy also. Um, if you believe that all of that is okay. Um, I would ask you, I would stand on James 1 5 and ask you to take that to the Lord and put your pride aside of what you've been indoctrinated to believe and truly ask the Lord. That's the only way James 1 5 works. You know, and the church can't be double minded and double mouthed about it. They can't say, on one hand, oh, yeah. James 1, 5, figure out if the church is true and use that to suck people in. And then on the other hand, say, oh, no, don't go to James 1, 5. Just listen to what the prophet says. No, everything the prophet, everything a bishop, anything anybody teaches at a lesson in church, anything that's taught outside of pure doctrine, meaning the Book of Mormon, you need to take and stand on James 1, 5 and ask God yourself. That's the part they leave out. Because it doesn't fit their narrative. Because they know you wouldn't get the correct answers. Okay? Okay, so anyway. Um, so should we reserve sex for marriage? Yes, of course we should. We totally 100% should. These are things, these are good things. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Okay? So, Julie speaks truth about so many things. President Nelson lies about the jab and mandating masks, etc. Um, I did a video a while back with Elder Rasband. I had an actual audio tape that someone shared with me from Cache Valley. 
And Cache Valley, Utah, where he was telling people, other men, priesthood holders, bishops, and state presidents, to call people to repentance if they don't do what they're told, if they don't just do what they're told and wear a mask, if they feel like their their liberty in God, you know, their God-given agency is being taken away, their, their authority and power to think for themselves is being taken away. And he said, oh no, call them to repentance. Punish them. For what? For standing on James 1, 5. For using their own discernment skills in their heart space. For using and their own God-given agency. He said to call them to repentance. Okay? So, um, I would ask you guys, because this video is labeled, you know, the Julie Rowe non-cult against, you know, the LDS cult. So I'm trying to get you guys to really think here. Um, I would ask you, do you feel good in or at church? Or do you struggle feeling constantly unworthy? Because that's not from Christ or God, you know? That's not from Father, if that's truly how you feel. How do you feel after general conference? Do you feel worthy? Do you feel unworthy? Do you feel like you can make it to heaven or are you scared and overwhelmed like you are a failure? Also not from Christ. Okay? Um, now, in the dream, I was shown that people are calling Julie a fake false prophetess and that she has a cult following. Okay, let me just say something here. I never ever feel bad after a healing session with Julie, after I do a Zoom with a lot of other people and Julie, after I go to one of her live conferences, after she does a free live on YouTube or a free podcast of hers, I never, ever feel bad about myself. I feel free and amazing. Now, I know what some of you are thinking because they showed me in the dream what you would think when I said this. You're thinking, yeah, but that's because you're just going off willy-nilly. You're doing what you want. You're not adhering to God. No, I am 100% adhering to the covenants that I've made with Elohim. I am 100% standing on my rock and redeemer, which is Jesus Christ. I am living my covenants. And so is Julie. Julie doesn't go out and say to people, um, uh, ditch the Book of Mormon. She never says Joseph Smith wasn't a prophet or that Hiram wasn't a prophet. She never, um, she doesn't say go out and